In this review, a bunch of burning questions will be answered. Why are the bells ringing so loud and so often in this video? Was the test performed according to strict scientific criteria? What audio carriers were used? What type of stylus was used? What is this donut reminiscent of? How does the classic perfume JD's number 30 work? What does such a dirty pig do in such a clean video? In what language does a piano communicate with congas and bongos? Who was the author's dance partner in the video clips with Cuban music? How is it possible that a 66 years old LP could play an important role in the amplifier comparison. Has the author found enlightenment? What is the function of these two movie hits in a high-end review? Why could the author not remain seated? Which of these two beauties was the winner, and so on and so forth. Hi, Renee here. I'm preparing for the review. My new DIY rack proved to be ideal for the job and saved me the tiresome lifting to and fro of four heavy monoblocks and made changing the AC cords and interlinks a breeze. The listening tests were a pleasure to perform and delivered clear, repeatable and reliable results. It turned out to be a really awesome and above all enlightening test. Everyone who likes changing parts of his stereo equipment once in a while will notice that any harmless add-on can modify the sound and swamping the centerpiece and heart of a setup, the amplifier, can turn your listening experience upside down. That's why I welcome the subscriber's suggestion to compare the Chady's JA30 with my previous amps the Chinese Sefsiu tube monoblocks. Without a long-winded introduction, let's go straight into action. For quite some time now I have been enjoying this composition by Luis Conte called El Real de Hielo because of its nostalgic Cuban charm and its explosive percussion work. But again and again the Chadis JA30 disappointed me. Any music lover knows how congas, bongos and drums sound and the meager performance simply disgraced the JA-30. And in addition, there were those long sustained bass notes which the Jadis took for the landing of a jumbo jet and bloated the sound as much as it could. With the Cephsius, the salsa rhythm went immediately into the feet while the JA-30 rather tickled my sphincter, which cramped with each strumming of a bass string in fear of another fit of diary. With the Chinese amps, I could not resist listening to this same number twice, because I was so thrilled by the bone-dry kicks on the drum skins and the reverberation followed by them. Just a dull, simple, strong blow with the jadis 
but with the Zephsius, a colorful mixture of all resonances which collaborate to create something as transient as such a kick, bursting in milliseconds and fading in milliseconds to make place for the following beat. This made it even possible for me to follow the dialogue between some bongos and the bass strings on the piano, performed in a stunning timing between the two. Highlighting such incredible details let me bring into consideration that the performance that was the Dornier Cri 40 years ago and could thrill the Jadis customers of old does not necessarily convince nowadays aficionados who are spoiled and catered for by much more innovative and aspiring companies. To make sure that my observation concerning the missing crispiness and snappiness is true, I played the Afro-Cuban number Ciao Ciao from this CD titled Ladies in Mercedes. And again we get this lackadaisical mishmash from the Chinese while the Chinese amps start a nice string of firecrackers going. And just as if this was not enough, the disappointment returned with a Miami Beach rumba on the CD Moliendo Cafe and kept on returning when I listened to that incredibly dynamic recording of the Musicus Percussion Ensemble on this CD. This alarming experience was the starting shot for me to heap up all the CDs and LPs with a lot of drumming and bass which I used in previous reviews and are still lingering in my ears. I swear I have never really enjoyed these tracks while the JA30 was in my listening room and that was a long period of time, over half a year to be exact. Now I was electrified and energized. And enlightened at the same time. And it dawned on me that the JA30 was rather intended for presumptuous anemic addicts who after stuffing themselves with escargot in herb sauce, caramelized duck, fat French cheese and old wine, and therefore suffering from indigestion, are in the mood to show off their profound love for high end by applauding anything that sounds fat and bloated as well. As the French are famous for their perfumes, I suspect that the two amplifier cases are just oversized perfume containers for mollycoddles. The mere design of the Seftius is a clear demonstration of understatement and elegant industrial vintage design, but sonically they are everything else than lollipop licking candy asses. On the CD Voice with Heart, 
released only two years ago, my favorite is the title Comes Love, sung by T.R. Alden, accompanied by the Warren Vache Quartet. One of the highlights is a bass solo so boisterous and powerful that I can only hope the bass player has a gun license for showcasing his artistry. It's all about dynamics, speed, elasticity, and seems to include built-in mini bass drums. Not even the sluggish chadis could resist so much energy. But with the Chinese, the air was filled with all the colophonium particles which were catapulted from the strings. Watch your feet. Another strong point of this recording is of course T.R. Alden's peppery jazz voice, so it's time to talk about voices. Voices over the Chadis amps sometimes sound like being rendered from an AI voice processing program which skips on all two individual traits to help creating and remodeling a soft synthetic voice. That's the Chadis Cosmetic Saloon. All puppets should look the same. And one more aspect you should be aware of is this. Amps like the Seftus reproduce the voices in a down-to-earth manner. I could provide a long list of recordings where I enjoyed a tender, aspirated, vibrating singing style with the Chinese amps and heard only a generalized, over-polished, artificial sound with the JA-30, a uniform, soft style aimed at pleasing the easy-listening type of consumers. Those who dig a little deeper can quickly expose that it's only a clever attempt to simulate space like a 3D photo which is still printed on a two-dimensional piece of paper. With good recordings, the Seftu provided an illusion of much more space which allowed my less substantial ego, respectively my mind, to walk around persons and instruments instead of only looking at them from the front. This quality is also responsible for the touch of authentic room acoustics which were delivered with many good recordings but were always lost when listened to with the Chadis, which is almost three times the price of the Seftus. Although the Chadis JP30 has been messing up my high-end life for more than half a year with endless attempts of troubleshooting and repairs and still is killing my nerves with the obviously unrepairable phonohum, I must at least concede that it seems to deliver 90% of the original data to the amps. Otherwise, they would not be able to amplify the signals in totally different ways. It seems that the company was not able to teach them the same language, so that the JP30 costs pearls before swine, because the JA30 has its own aims and simply ignores many a novel sound or messes it up. The JA30 prefers creating a massage parlor wellness sound and selling it as high-end quality. Since I bought the Chadis combo last year, I have become more and more dissatisfied, but I thought I was only fed up with too much hi-fi. And then came the helping hand, a subscriber who asked me to do a comparison between the Jadis and the Sefsius. And that did not only give birth to this episode, 
but it also brought me the final enlightenment. Billy Holiday songs for distant gay lovers. When I heard Billy with the Cephsius for the first time, I was blown away by her earthy, variegated voice, which sometimes went down as deep as the stairway to the coal cellar. She has got so many facets available, from sweet to the growling of a cougar, or even the rumble of a she bear. That was not the type Lady in Satin, which is preferred by Jadis. So the J A thirty immediately felt embarrassed to the bone and frantically started to atomize thick layers of Jadis number thirty over her vocal performance, which caused devastating collateral damages to her vital voice. The compulsory Jadis standard sound imposed on such an iridescent style of singing reduced Billy's authenticity, and over and above that filtered out the sensitive room acoustic signals, which took away most of the fascinating tension in the recording studio. It was, of course, not a difference like the step from an OLED to a 3D-capable TV, but still audible enough. The song was recorded 66 years ago, when I was only seven, and certainly they would not have admitted me to the concert. But now, with the help of the Cephsius, I felt like a time traveler teleported with skin and bones back to the year 1958, as if I was watching a black and white film and I could see that the stage the JA-30 had shown to me was much bigger and much deeper, in fact. I ask you to turn the soundscape into a landscape in your imagination and add a blanket of snow covering everything. You still can see the trees, the hills, and other elevated objects, but everything looks flat and boring. And for those who like to see nice ladies instead of landscapes, I present these two beauties. Which one would you like to marry? Before making a decision, don't forget there are things like soap and water in life. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to put any pressure on you. Decide as you like. It's totally up to your personal taste. This is only an independent review. Now, let us proceed to the sound of the instruments. To make things shorter, I concentrate on a single instrument and Barney Kessel's guitar amplifier. Sounding expressionless with the JA-30, it becomes sparkling and alive with the Chinese amps. You even think you see the glowing of the majestic tubes, and with some expertise, you could even decide which type it is. Not to speak of the incredible lifelike sound. For sound and for quality reasons, Chadis was the worst purchase I made in my 50 years of high end. So, think twice what you are going to buy. The laughing winner is somebody else. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again when I can present more news about Chadis and other stereo stuff. Bye bye. <laughs>